Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. In this video, I'm going to discuss distributors and um, specifically the gears on distributors and how you have to install them. So this distributor is out of a V8. It's out of that Mercruiser V8 right there. So this is a V8 Mercruiser distributor. It's actually a Thunderbolt ignition system. And um, yeah, I know it's not the greatest system, but I'm, I'm going to keep it on this particular engine. So. Um, this uh, distributor had a worn out gear. So if you look at this gear, you can see the, let's see if we hold it where you can see the teeth very good. You see how those teeth are worn, there's grooves worn in those teeth. This, this gear, although it probably keep working, is, is pretty much worn out and it needs to be replaced. So when you replace distributor gears, you need to make sure that you can put it back on in the exact same spot it, was, it came off. So this is another V8 distributor, and this this is untouched by any, this is not has not been modified, or the gear has not been taken off or anything. So this one will give me a go by as to how to put it back on. So if you take the distributor and look at the gear, there's a little dot that, down there in the bottom, um, right down there at the very bottom of that gear. You see a little dot. And if you follow that dot, it lines up with the rotor. There's your rotor right there. The rotor's pointing right at me, right at the camera, and so is that dot. So you want to put the gear on so that the dot and the rotor are lined up. Now, I don't know if all distributors have that. I just know that these marine distributors do, the, the Thunderbolt marine distributors do. So, so what I'm about to do is put a new gear on this distributor and line that dot up with the rotor. All right now, um, the, uh, the type gear that's used must be what's called a melanized gear. This, uh, hold on, excuse me. This gear here is brand new. It's a melanized gear. It's got the dot right there, the dot right there by my, the tip of my thumb right there. So it's got that, um, that, that dot. And what's peculiar about that dot, if you notice, the dot lines up. If you follow it straight up, it comes in about halfway between two teeth. But if you spin this thing around, you, the, the hole right there is, this hole right here is where is the pin, that, the roll pin that goes through the stripper. That's what holds the gear on the stripper. You can install this 180 degrees off. If you install it backwards, you'll see the hole on this side lines up directly under a gear, the, under a tooth. So if you put it on this direction, with this, this side rotated towards the uh, rotor, on this particular shiver, it doesn't hurt you. And I'll explain that in a minute. But anyway, back to what I'm talking about. So this gear is what's called a melanized gear. And you have to use what's called a melanized gear whenever you have a steel roller camshaft. The older cast camshafts, the old flat tappet camshafts back uh, before 1987 that were uh, made out of cast iron, you don't have to use a melanized gear. But with the new steel roller camshafts, you have to use a melanized gear. In this particular case, the part number, a GM part number was uh, 104.56413. And this is a melanized gear I bought from Summit Racing. I think it's about $65, $70. So I'm about to put this melanized gear on this distributor. Now, here's another thing. So here's another gear I have. And this is a gear, it's actually in pretty good shape. And it came off of this V6 distributor right here. This is a V6, old V6 stripper. Another customer paid me to replace with a Thunderbolt ignition, um, excuse me, paid me to replace with a Delco EST ignition system. This is a Thunderbolt distributor. It had some problems, so I replaced this entire distributor ignition system with a Delco system. I have videos on that elsewhere in my channel. But the gear on this distributor was in very good shape, which is right here. However, that this gear and that distributor can have an engine that had been rebuilt in a very poor way. So without knowing the source of that engine or that distributor, who built it or what it was, what it originally came out of, I'm not going to use it. It's just too risky for me to use that gear, not knowing what it, um, what material it's made of or what what it's, uh, what it came from. Now I'm pretty sure the gearing is okay because if you look at the dot, let me see if we can find the dot on this one. So if you look at the dot, once again it goes right up through between two gears, and that's okay, that's fine. But it's the material that I don't trust. I don't know where it came from. It looks like it's. Uh, Machine steel, it's got scratch marks on it, where it's machine. Um, again, I don't, I don't know what, can do, what that gear is or where it came from, so I'm not using it. Um, so at this time, I'm gonna install the gear back on this, uh, on this V8 distributor and um, make sure the dot is pointed towards the rotor and it should be good to go. When you install the distributor gear, there's a spacer, there's a little uh, washer that goes between the gear and the housing. You put, it on, you put it on the shaft first and you slide your gear on and then this roll pin you take this roll pin, and uh, I'm going to use a vise right there, and just press that that roll pin through that gear. Make sure the dot's in the right orientation. Now, back to what I was saying about the uh, gear being right. 
So if you, got, if you put this gear on 180 degrees out, you're off by half a tooth. Well, it doesn't really matter in these type engines because to set the timing, you rotate the distributor. So all you're gonna do is you'll, you'll be able to compensate for the gear being off half a tooth by just rotating the distributor to another location. The distributor is internally, it's called phase, it's called distributor phasing. So let me show you what that means. So if we take this distributor, let me see if we can turn it around here. So now, if you notice this rotor is pointed right at the camera, but so is the trigger. That trigger right there, that's an optical trigger. It's uh, done by this metal, uh, the metal spinning piece called the rotor. No, it's actually called the, uh, it's not a reluctor. I'm not sure what it's called actually, but um, anyway. It's blocked in the signal in that pickup signal right down, well, I can't do this, let's see, right down in there. So it's a pickup and the rotor blocks the signal or blocks either through metal or blocks light. I'm not sure if it's optical or not, but so it blocks the signal and that's when your trigger is to, to fire your ignition. At that moment in time, if you look clear, carefully, there's a little notch in the distributor right there. And that notch is going to line up with the, um, I'm not going to say it's the number one position, but it's going to line up with one of the towers on the distributor for the spark plug wire connects. And that's called distributor phasing. You, your trigger, your rotor, and your spark plug tire all have to be lined up when the trigger happens in order for that spark to go out to the right cylinder. If it wasn't that way, if this, if this uh, rotor is, say, halfway between those notches down there, you have a, especially with electronic, and, and I'll explain this a little better in a little bit, but um, you, you run the risk of firing on the wrong spark plug tower because the trigger is not phased with the rotor. So if you have a, uh, say, a, let's see, 1996 to, uh, I don't know, 2005 Chevrolet truck with the 4.3 or the V8, 5.7 uh, V8 engine, you'll notice your distributor is not, is not adjustable. It actually, the body here is actually square and the clamp is square, or the clamp is, the, like the box here, how that's square right there, rectangular. The clamp holds onto that square part and then the clamp ro uh, locks down on the intake manifold and you cannot adjust it, you can't rotate the distributor. It holds it in one place, in one place only. So it's not, not adjustable. But the reason is because the, the trigger is actually off the crank, there's a crankshaft trigger that triggers the computer so that this distributor has no longer got a trigger for the uh, computer to fire the, uh, coal, the ignition system. So they, they lock down the distributor to prevent adjustments. Now, I made the mistake one time putting the gear on 180, degree out, 180 degrees out, so I was off by half a tooth. Well, when that happened, I got a camshaft error position because in that particular distributor, the camshaft sensor is inside the distributor like right here. So since I had it off by half a tooth, it turns out I think it's like 22 and a half degrees, I don't, don't quote me on that, I'll have to verify that number, but I was so far out that the computer gave me a code called camshaft, uh, I think it was camshaft synchronization error. So the, the camshaft signal was not within the window that the computer expected it to be, and that was because I was off by half a tooth on the distributor. So I had to pull the distributor back out after it was all running and turn it around 180 degrees and put it back on, and that fixed the problem. But that was an expensive lesson to learn. So um, that's called distributor phasing, and um, it, it, a lot of people don't understand it. Um, matter of fact, uh, recently on one of my, I, I did a video on Dodge Ram, the Dodge Ram fuel synchronization system. I'm not going to go into a lot of details here, but a recent comment, the guy says, my engine ran like crap, and uh, I set the synchronization back to uh, whatever with the scan tool, and you don't know what you're talking about because my truck run a lot better once I got the, uh, once I got the uh, thing synchronized. I never said you shouldn't have it synchronized. I'm just saying people have a misunderstanding of what the synchronization means. What it means is that the camshaft or the, the uh, on the Dodge distributor, it is adjustable. So you have to adjust it. Remember I was telling you how this distributor is locked down. This distributor is in a Chevrolet, this distributor is locked down and will not rotate. In a Dodge Magnum 360, it will rotate. So you have to rotate the distributor to get the cam sensor in phase with the crankshaft. And therefore, there, there's the uh, computer will know that the, that the distributor is in the right location when you have that, uh, they, they call it fuel synchronization, but to me it's really a misnomer. It should be called cam synchronization or something like that. But um, the computer knows where the engine is based on the crankshaft sensor. It just needs the cam sensor as, a, as another indicator of where it's at. You need to go watch those videos if you want to know, have a better understanding of all that. 
So, um, but in a marine application, like I was saying, the, the gear can be off by half of a tooth. It'll still work because when you rotate the distributor, you're just, you're compensating for that, that shaft being off. What really matters, what is more important is that the rotor and the pickup internally are synchronized. That's where your distributor phasing is, is, is uh, important. Now, in electronic ignition systems, your trigger does not fire the coil immediately. Uh, if you watch one of my videos, I don't remember, remember which one it was, but I talk about there's a delay. So the trigger happens, the, and if the computer's controlling the spark timing, in this particular, uh, in this particular engine, there's an ignition module, so it controls the timing, and it must work off the same principle because you cannot, you cannot trigger an event that you cannot have an event that hasn't been triggered yet. So this trigger must happen, and then the Thunderbolt module must delay for a certain amount of time to have ignition advance. Uh, to have an ignition advance, the the more advance you want, the less the delay. Um, again, I, I went into all that in another video, but. Um, Bottom line is that distributor phasing uh, is important and you can get a distributor out of phase. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the software, I used to program uh, General Motors fuel injection quite a bit. In the software, there's a software setting for maximum uh, degrees of advance, which in a, in, a, in a V8 distributor is 42 degrees. And it's 42 because 45 is halfway, to the, is, is halfway between two towers. And if you go past 45, you can actually jump to the next tower, which will either cause pre-ignition it either be way advanced timing on the on the next cylinder, or it'd be way late timing on the previous cylinder. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but the bottom line is you have to have your uh, distributor um, your distributor phase phasing proper, especially in electronic fuel injection. And in this boat, it's not as critical because um, the, uh, the 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 distributor is phased mechanically by the, the alignment of the rotor and the trigger inside the distributor. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install this gear. And uh, I'm not going to really show that on the video. I just want to discuss how I'm doing it. Again, I'm going to take the right gear, find the dot, line the dot up with the tip of the rotor, slide it on, put the roll pin in, done. So I hope all this made sense. Um, again, thanks for watching my videos. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. And turn on notifications so you get more. This is the second video I've done in this, uh, this evening, so I may do a few more. Thanks for watching.